What's up design family and welcome to another episode of Fit Design TV. On today's episode, we'll be talking about money, especially when it comes to the relationship with sportswear design and production. Where I see a lot of designers creating their collection can spend their money more effectively, so where they overspend and where are some of the other areas that you can spend a little bit more and you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck you're gonna be able to use that money to help you stand out from the crowd. And let's face it, the sportswear and activewear space is super saturated and any way that I can help you guys to stand out from the crowd, I'm gonna try. If you guys are interested in that, watch this video, you're going to find out. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here on this channel. We discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around. You're in for a good one. You have your first or even second collection, you have your budget where you spend your money and where you not spend your money. So three places where I see a lot of people overspending and I can understand why is the following. Number one is on samples. And this is kind of like a, tr a two pronged situation. People have their designs, they're super excited and they cannot wait to have the physical embodiment of this design that they've been uh, yearning over and they're so excited to bring to market it can be easy to carry to get carried away with samples you want to create 10 samples you want to show them to your friends your family you want to create a pre-marketing campaign however what ends up happening with samples is that these samples by design and by necessity they're going to be at a heavily marked up price Supplier that's going to make a one-off has to source the fabric, has to source the logos, all of these things specifically for this one-off sample. Chances are they're not going to be able to amortize the cost of the sample across many, many units. So samples are always going to be more expensive, more time consuming. And where a lot of young designers or where a lot of people with not too much experience in fashion make mistakes is they go into it without the right documentation to accurately convey their design to suppliers. So what happens? You pay for these 10 samples, you're excited, you wanna get them in multiple sizes, in multiple colors if possible, and what happens is that your samples come back incorrect. You've paid all this money, spent all this time, and the sample's not where you thought it would be because you did not convey and you did not communicate the design correctly to the supplier, whether it's a tech pack that isn't fully thought out or if it's a sketch, so on and so forth. There just isn't enough information to properly give your supplier the direction needed to create this physical product out of the digital idea or even if it's a verbal idea. I'll see a lot of people come to us with these initial kind of stories of how they communicated everything by text or images. So they'll send reference images, so on and so forth. And because the supplier wants to get the business and they don't necessarily understand because of language barriers or they just want to kind of put the business on the track, they end up with the wrong sample. And you spent all this money and all this time and you don't have the product you want. Even if the design is correct, bear in mind that samples are tremendously marked up and then overall that spending your money on these few samples is not necessarily the best way to spend when you can actually spend less on samples and put more of that into other areas of the business and still get the end result that you desire. So we usually use samples in order to test out a product, make sure that design in a physical format is how we want it, it fits correctly, and overall the finishing material and all the trims used are up to standard. You don't need 10 to 20 samples of that in order to convey that. You can wait for the production or your pre-production samples, which are once you actually go into production, and that's another video for another day. But definitely I see a lot of people overspending on samples. The second area where I see people overspending, and this might come as a surprise because it's kind of counterintuitive, is on this pursuit of low MOQs. And I get it, we've all been there, you have a budget, you don't wanna invest overly into this idea that you're not 100% certain of, especially as a starter brand, you wanna limit your risk. 
So you're pursuing this lower MOQ and you find a supplier that can offer you this unrealistically low MOQ with all this customization attached to it and it's 50 MOQ. What ends up happening is behind the scenes, you don't realize that the supplier is actually overcharging you for these 50 pieces by two, three X sometimes in order to make up the deficit. And that's not a detriment to the supplier. The supplier here is not necessarily doing anything wrong. It's because they physically cannot offer you with that MOQ, but they want to get the business. So in order to keep you happy and to keep you convinced that they're the right person to go to, they end up overcharging in order to compensate. So you're not getting these extra pieces that you've actually paid for that are included in that unit price, but, and you're you thinking that you're getting a good deal because you have a lower minimum. However, you're definitely overpaying for your product and you're not taking into account other customs and duties and other fees that are attached to this product that are not in that unit price that you can easily find yourself in a position where you don't have enough margin to create a successful running business out of it. And you've spent the same amount in total on 50 pieces as you would have spent on 250 pieces. So low MOQs and that pursuit for low MOQs is definitely an area where a lot of people get sucked in because they're being drawn to the number, right? When someone says, oh, you only have to purchase 50 pieces, it sounds a lot more enticing than someone telling you you have to purchase 500 pieces. However, the unit economics don't necessarily work out in your favor and that's a place where you can definitely overspend. Look at your spending not as a gross total but in terms of your unit spend. If you're going to run a, a successful business, you're going to be able to sell these products but you have to make sure that your unit cost and what it costs you to make this product, ship it to you, um, acquire a customer, all that stuff makes sense so that the margin you're getting off the sales price is going to be conducive to running a successful business. And number three is, and again, I understand why this is, because there's a lack of information out there, there's so much competition, there's a bit of lack of transparency, is customers typically overpay for shipping. There are a ton of things that play into the cost of shipping. Number one is it depends which method of shipping you're going for, whether you're shipping by air, sea, or freight, what speed you're shipping with, if it's by uh, air, is it by cargo, so is it on a carrier that's typically a bit slower, is it by express, like DHL, UPS, FedEx, all these things are going to play into the cost of the goods. In terms of a general understanding or general overview, when it comes to shipping by air, the best method that I found is by shipping by air freight. So this is the middle tier. It typically takes around eight to 10 days from the origin to the destination. And you usually pay around three to four dollars per kilo, depending on the time of year. Obviously more popular times of year, such as the holidays are going to cost a little bit more and times of year where there's less are gonna cost a little bit less. So it's going to depend on those specific parameters, but an area that you can easily overpay is on shipping. We highly recommend you do your due diligence to find out all the parameters of your shipping time and make sure that you're getting a best deal or as good as a deal as possible so that you're not being ripped off by your supplier. So those are the three areas that I see a lot of people overspending. What are some areas that people maybe neglect and where they can spend a little bit more and they're going to get much more bang for their buck on that dollar per dollar spend? Well, number one is simple, and this relates to the sample orders and all of that kind of stuff, is make a good tech pack. And I wanna preface this by saying, you don't have to go out and hire a firm to create a tech pack or a designer. Just invest the time and resources into learning what it takes to make a good tech pack that can accurately convey your design so that when you get a sample made, it's made correctly. Samples that are made without proper tech packs usually come out incorrect. Instead of needing one or two samples by using a good tech pack, you will end up needing six, seven, eight samples and spending all that time. So I cannot stress it enough, spend a little bit more time in creating a great design with a good tech pack as opposed to trying to skimp on that and going straight into the samples because it's a lot more alluring, you have the physical product, you have that association with it, oh, I have a brand, right? It's a bit emotional. Cut the emotion out of it and understand that you're going to get there faster and cheaper by creating a tech pack that is going to communicate the design. It's gonna save you a lot of headache and heartache moving forward. 
Number two, where people can spend a bit more money is definitely on fabrics and great trims. The fastest way to lose a customer is by using poor quality or bad quality fabric. It's the first thing people feel when they get your product. And bad quality fabric is instantly recognizable. It's rough, it doesn't last long, and it's a good marker that this person is probably not going to buy again from you in the future, especially if it doesn't hold up well on two to three washes. Also invest in using the right trims. We've done a video on what trims is, I highly recommend you check it out. However, use quality trims that are going to last through washes. If you have logos that are peeling off two, three washes in, your chances are you're not going to get that customer come back to you for a future, for a future purchase and you're going to lose out on that. So if you spend a little bit more money, you're going to have a better first impression and you're going to have better customer retention and overall you're going to lubricate your business a bit better. So I highly recommend that these are areas that you can definitely spend a bit more and you're going to get a lot more out of it and it's going to help set you up or set you aside from what's out there and to really kind of push you to the forefront as a brand to watch and a brand to appreciate. Number three, and this is something that I'm personally very, very into is the presentation of your product. So the presentation of your products comes in kind of two ways. One is the visual and one is the physical. The physical is a good packaging experience for your customers. When they receive your goods, they instantly are going to be greeted with the packaging items. If these items are done half-heartedly or they're done in a cheap manner, that people are going to get a horrible first impression of your brand. You want to make sure to get off on the right foot, even if you have a good product, if they're packaged in a way that is not appealing, it's not going to stir the emotions in the right way and get people thinking about the brand correctly, right? You want to put your customers in a frame of mind to get them excited about a product. Think about some of your favorite brand, luxury brands or even tech brands like Apple, their packaging experience is super well curated and there's a reason for that. They know that that's going to be one of the first experiences people have with their products and they want to make sure that they set it up the right way. So spend a bit more time on your physical packaging, whether it's hang tags, your product seeds, your poly mailers, make sure that you give a good first impression. A good first impression. Number two or kind of like the uh, companion to this piece is make sure that you're visually representing your products accurately. And this comes in the case of e-commerce businesses, which most young and new brands are. Most of us are selling online direct to consumer and the only interaction we're going to have with our customer before they purchase from us or our potential customer is on our websites or any other shopping platforms that we're using. So you need to be able to visually represent your product in the most accurate and attractive way possible. There's no use in creating a great design with the best fabric in the perfect color of your choice that you spec out specific to Pantone and you've custom dyed if that stuff is not being accurately represented. I would highly recommend purchasing a decent camera. We at the office use an A7 III, we use a 50 millimeter and we use a 100 millimeter for close up shots and I highly recommend that you purchase a camera that can visually represent your products correctly. You don't have to break the bank on it. There are better budget cameras as well that you can look into, but a good camera with a solid tripod, a backdrop, a white backdrop for consistency and representation, and a good set of three lights are going to make the world of difference towards visually representing your products in an appealing way. That's pretty much it guys. This is areas where I feel like a lot of people can spend a little bit more and get a lot more out of it and help them stand out from the rest of your crowd. Because like I said, let's face it, these sports or inactive spaces have become so competitive that it just makes sense to go above and beyond to put yourself out there and to treat your brand like the special unicorn that it is. If you guys feel that there are some areas that I've missed out, please feel free to leave in the comments below. Always enjoy, I always enjoy hearing from you guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, please, please, please consider smashing a thumbs up. It does help us out tremendously. And if you guys enjoyed the video and you wanna see more content like this, consider subscribing. We put out two to three videos per week on similar types of topics. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Fit Design TV. Until next time, stay awesome.